Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains just so cool. So, so cool. I mean, maybe it's cool. I'm not very cool. I'm not cool at all. It's okay, though. And today, we are going to discuss something that I think is just so cool. And when I saw it, I'm like, oh no, 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 no. I had to make a video about it. It has to be its own video. I'm not just throwing this on a list somewhere. No, 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 no. This thing is too cool for anything but a solo outing. This is the story of the Sikorsky S-67 Blackhawk. Now, before we proceed, I want to amend any confusion. Not this Blackhawk. See, this Blackhawk is spelled Blackhawk. This is just one word. Blackhawk. And look at that thing. Just wow. Absolutely phenomenal. It first flew on the 20th of August, 1970. And talk about a futuristic, forward-thinking design. It's sleek, it's just awesome looking. It would be right at home in a futuristic sci-fi video game. I mean, heck, this almost looks like a vehicle you would use in Halo or something. I love it! I absolutely adore it. Not quite as much as I love the Comanche. Only one of this super cool helicopter was ever built. And it was a private venture that Sikorsky went into themselves using their own R&D funds. It's a tandem two-seat attack assault helicopter, and it was designed around, believe it or not, the Sikorsky S-61, which looks nothing like it. But they utilize the dynamic drive and the rotor systems from that successful design. The S-61, by the way, is the civilian version of the SH-3C King, both of which are considered very influential and excellent designs. So, utilizing some components from them into an attack assault variant isn't necessarily the worst idea in the world. After all, everything around that setup is completely different. It's very skinny, limiting ground troops' ability to shoot at it, much like the Cobra attack helicopter did. Now, the S-67 didn't actually start out as the X-67. The story starts way back in 1964. On the 1st of August, the United States Army issued a request for proposals for its Advanced Aerial Fire Support System, or AAFSS. Two companies submitted designs for this particular program. Lockheed offered its CL-840, which would evolve into the AH-56 Cheyenne, while Sikorsky submitted something called the S-66. This design featured a rotor prop that served as a tail rotor, but as speeds increased, it would rotate 90 degrees to act as a pusher prop. Very bizarre, but interesting. It also had short fixed wings, and it was powered by a 2,500 kilowatt Lycoming T-55 turboshaft engine. It was estimated to be pretty fast, possibly reaching 370 kilometers an hour, but able to be pushed to 460 kilometers an hour for brief periods. But the Army didn't really care for Sikorsky's initial design, as if they felt it was too bold and possibly too expensive. They did initially award both companies contracts for further study into the designs on the 19th of February 1965, but by the 3rd of November that same year, the Army announced that Lockheed was the winner of the program, as they perceived their design to be just less expensive and able to be available much sooner. The technical hurdles involving Sikorsky's outing proved to be too much for the Army's taste. So they persisted with the development of what would become the Cheyenne. Now the Cheyenne probably deserves its own video too, as its ill-fated development resulted in, well, its cancellation. The Cheyenne never entered proper service, even though in many ways Lockheed was pushing the envelope when it came to helicopter designs. I can go into more detail regarding the technical hurdles, but the short end of it is that the Cheyenne proved to be more technically expensive than they thought, more difficult to develop, and the end result was that the Army just wasn't willing to push through with it anymore. But due to the issues and delays, Sikorsky sensed an opportunity. They'd been keeping an eye on the project, and they weren't willing to give up a contract they might be able to snag from Lockheed. Originally, they started out with an armed version of the SH-3C King. That wasn't seen as a good alternative, 
But as the Cheyenne kept running into more issues, they developed an intermediate high-speed attack aircraft that they finally dubbed the Sikorsky S-67 Black Hawk. And that's really what we want to talk about. Look at this helicopter. Just look at this beautiful piece of design work. It is glorious. It featured a five-bladed main rotor and a tail rotor. The main rotor was taken from the S-61, but it was modified to have a hub fairing, swept main rotor blade tips, and a special Alpha-1 linkage, which added to the main rotor controls to increase collective pitch sensitivity, which extended the collective pitch range. The 20-degree swept main rotor blade tips helped to overcome a phenomenon that was called Submultiple Oscillating Track, or SMOT. This causes variations in tip track at high Mach numbers. The result was that it allowed the S-67 to achieve and maintain high cruising speeds. Something else that was innovative, the wheels actually retracted fully into the stub wing sponsors to increase overall aerodynamics and again to help it maintain much higher speeds. It also had speed brakes on the wing trailing edges that could be used to decrease speed much faster than a typical helicopter and as such increase maneuverability. It was fitted with a moving map display, a hands-on collective radio tuned control, and night vision systems. The armament included a tactical armament turret, or TAT-140, with a three-barrel 20mm cannon. It could also carry 16 TAU missiles, 70mm rockets, or AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. The Blackhawk was also powered by two General Electric T-58 GE-5 1500 shaft horsepower or 1100 kilowatt engines. This thing was awesome! It was ambitious, exciting, and in many ways Sikorsky was pushing the envelope with this thing. Due to issues with the Cheyenne's development, the Army was interested in the Blackhawk, as well as an additional helicopter, the Bell 309 King Cobra, which is the development of Bell's successful Cobra attack helicopter. Both aircraft were put alongside the Cheyenne and did a series of flight test evaluations in 1972. And generally speaking, the Army was pretty impressed with the Black Hawk. It performed very well, and even before the test, it set several air speed records for helicopters. On the 4th of December 1970, it flew at 348.97 kilometers an hour, or 217 miles per hour over a 3 kilometer, or 1.9 mile, course. Similarly, it managed to fly at 355.48 kilometers an hour, or 221 miles an hour, on a 15 to 25 kilometer, or 9.3 to 16 mile course, on the 19th of December, 1970. Those records both stood for eight years. But ultimately, none of that would matter. Due to pressure from the Air Force, as they didn't want the Army having a helicopter that would usurp their close air support role, the Army wound up rejecting all of the entries to the latest competition. The Black Hawk, the King Cobra, and the Cheyenne would all be rejected, with Lockheed's already existing contract, and thus the AH-56 Cheyenne's program being cancelled. The Army then followed up by creating a new advanced attack helicopter program. Sikorsky didn't give up on the Black Hawk. They did submit it, but it was ultimately rejected. The winner of that contract was actually the Hughes YAH-64 prototype, which would eventually evolve into what we now know as the Boeing AH-64 Apache attack helicopter. To be fair, the Apaches are great, absolutely phenomenal, there's no question, but I still wonder how things might have been different if Sikorsky had been given a shot. Despite the fact that the US military forces clearly didn't want their Black Hawk, they didn't want to give up on it. They obviously spent a great deal of money and time developing this new aircraft, and they really believed in the program. Sikorsky sent the only prototype on various marketing tours all around the world, where their pilots would perform rolls, split S's, and loops. The pilots also stressed that despite the size and speed of the craft, it was also very smooth and responsive. Everything about it seemed to be excellent, but even with this impressive display, it just didn't seem to go very well. They modified the design a bit on occasion, they still tinkered with it, and even the US Army still kind of kept their eye on the Black Hawk, even giving Sikorsky additional funding to modify it with a fan and fin tail rotor setup. This apparently increased its speed even more, but the modification was later removed, and then came the sad end to the S-67 Blackhawk. On the 1st of September 1974, the craft was performing at the Farnborough Air Show, which takes place at the Farnborough Airport, roughly 50 kilometers southwest of London. 
As the crew was performing a low-level roll maneuver, they misjudged their pitch, and this caused the nose to drop below the horizon. They attempted to recover from their inverted position by performing a split S maneuver, but they were too close to the ground by this point. They couldn't recover, and the helicopter struck the ground at level altitude, and immediately burst into flame. Skorsky test pilot Stu Craig died on impact, and test pilot Kirk Cannon died nine days after the accident due to his injuries. As a result of losing the only prototype, and the fact that they just couldn't get any military to really believe in the helicopter like they did, Sikorsky cancelled the project. It's a sad end for what could have been an awesome piece of military hardware. I still adore the design, and I adore what it may have been capable of. I'm not saying that perhaps the army may have been right by choosing the Apache over it. I mean, the Apache's been proven over the years. It's a good helicopter. And I admit I might be a bit biased because I do just think the Black Hawk looks genuinely cool. Like, there's just some appeal there for me. Perhaps in terms of capabilities, the Apache wound up being better. But it's interesting to think about what might have been had somebody, anywhere, given this poor thing a shot. But don't feel too bad for Sikorsky. While they were still testing their original Black Hawk, they were also messing about with their UH-60, which the army would wind up calling Black Hawk. This thing first flew on the 17th of October 1974, and it was introduced in 1979. It's still in service today, and about 4,000 of them have been produced in various forms. The reason for the space in between Black and Hawk is that this helicopter is not actually named in honor of the original Black Hawk. It's named to honor the Native American war leader, Black Hawk. Still, though, it's nice to see that the army wound up getting a Black Hawk in one way or another. It may not be the cool, ambitious attack helicopter anyone expected, but I think this transport copter has definitely proven itself time and time again over the years. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Some Dude 267, Orange Glass, Joshua Long, Ohio Trucker 1, Row Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Arthur Roy, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsu 131-232, Mr. Black Rose, Master of None, Josh Johnson, Lock Kraken, Twin Fox, Dime Blade 17, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Dozzy Wazit, and Tribal Typhoon. Till next time, this is Darkness, and a bit of a fond farewell.